A few years ago, we gave you the story of Seamus McDonough, a boxer turned shoe shiner. What's he doing now? In a few minutes, we'll find out. First, let's take you back. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. Seamus McDonough's version of Danny Boy could be heard down the corridors of Moscone Center, a welcomed interlude from the hustle and bustle of another trendy convention. Wow, that's the best time I've ever seen in my life. The Irishman is a shoe shiner, and while he'll leave your European pumps shining anew, it is his spirit that polishes your heart. To know me is to love me. I must be a hell of a guy. If you didn't know him, you'd swear he'd taken one punch too many. The truth is, there is much more to Seamus McDonough than a tin of polish. <laughs> he hits the shoes like he's delivering a right cross, as he once did to the eventual heavyweight champion of the world. Look closely. In his shoe shine box is a reminder of that fateful night in Atlantic City some 13 years ago. Seamus McDonough, 211 and three quarters. Evander Holyfield, 210 pounds. Tyson got, was supposed to fight Holyfield in June of 1990, Atlantic City. Tyson got, Tyson got knocked out by Douglas in Japan. So they looked in the rankings, they saw I was number nine in the world as a heavyweight, and they asked me to fight him. And I was good copy back in New York. I was in St. John's University, doing a little bit of acting, you know, Irish, you know, gregarious, boisterous, you know. So they asked- And you were white. I'm still white. It was almost like a movie script, only this was real. McDonough was 19, one and one. Holyfield, 23 and 0. Even his father admitted that Seamus wasn't ready, but when a $100,000 payday was offered, McDonough jumped at the chance. To me, he has the perfect style. For me, he has the perfect style. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, I think that uh, considering the fact that I hit harder than his last two opponents, I hit harder than Alex and harder than Michael Dokes. So I think my chances are excellent. Get in the Dokes fight. The first round was, was, I was out of it. I was so fearful, I, I, I kept falling down, you know, that movie falling down, I kept falling down. <laughs> he hit me on top of the head, it was not even that hard punch, I'd fall down, because anything would have, you know, you could have knocked me down that night. McDonough got back up, but his life changed for good in the fourth round. After a furious exchange, Holyfield lands two hard rights. McDonough's knees buckled, and he went down. And at 44 seconds into the fourth round, it was over. The whole thing seemed to me like it was a whole fight, like it happened in 10 seconds, I don't know, it just happened so quick, I don't know. Uh, I've never fought anybody of Evander's class, he's, he's, a great, he's a great fighter, he'll be the next world champion, believe me. Who wants a free shoe shine? 13 years later, Seamus McDonough free is here, shine. and he says losing to Holyfield saved his life. Behind the boxer was a heavy drinker who was suicidal, and at one time failed in an attempt to take his own life. Everything happened exactly how it did to get me right here right now, so I have no regrets. I'm happier now than ever have been in my life. Seamus hasn't had a drink in eight years, and he doesn't thirst for the boxing ring or the recognition from his five minutes of fame. But every now and then, if you're lucky, he'll tell you a story. Sometimes I bring it up, because I have, I have uh, I keep this little picture handy. That's your proof. That's me knocking the lunch out of him, yeah, my proof. Most people don't believe me. The summer's gone, and all the flowers are dying. Tis you, tis you must come, and we must go. Joining us now is uh, Seamus McDonough from his home in San Francisco. Seamus, are you still shoe shining? I am uh, still in the shoe shine business. Uh, I do a lot of uh, shows on the road now. I've turned it into a marketing company. Also, I'm, I, I got into acting. I've been to film school since I did that interview. I was the lead in a sitcom in New York, the lead in a crime series in LA. I did three movies. And then after doing all, all those things, I realized none of them made it to the, to the screen. I was like, what's going on here? So <laughs> I went to film school in Berkeley, the Berkeley Digital Film Institute, and learned how to make film. Uh, you have two sisters who are nurses in New York City and they both came down with the uh, disease. What's the update on them? Well, they actually weren't tested, but they had all the symptoms. And they're both nurses. They all stayed at home. Uh, they got over it. They're back and both are back at work now doing, doing the same thing again. Uh, they're nurses at Mount Sinai 
hospital up on the east side of Manhattan, and they're on the front lines uh, working. Finally, have you ever been in touch uh, post-fight with Evander? Many times, many times. I tell, tell him again that I was robbed. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but wait, but, uh, yeah. Do, so uh, do, do you actually, uh, uh, Seamus? Do you actually show that little photograph that you had in your shoebox? Do you show that to Evander? I showed him that, and you know what he said? He says, "I got to a left hook after that," and I said, "Prove it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's man. You, when you you when you really think about it, that was the real, the real Rocky uh, versus o, o, Apollo Creed moment. Uh, it was incredible opportunity for you. Uh, like I said in the post fight interview, it all just flashed. It just happened so quickly. I realized afterwards that I was not prepared for it. But you know what? I'm I'm, gra I'm grateful everything happened the way it is. I'm, I'm here right now. I'm not boxing anymore. I'm not even in this in the, much much to do with the sport. I'm grateful now to um, be celebrating a regular life. Can I say goodbye with you uh, taking us to a commercial break with Danny Boy? Do you still got it? Give it to me. Oh, Danny Boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. From Glen, I'm not going to stop. You got to cut me off. From <laughs> Glen to Glen and down the mountainside. <laughs> that Seamus McDonough, by the way, he's been sober now for 20 years. Congratulations, Seamus. And we'll be right back. <laughs> 